Welcome. Here we are at 10.5. Apply other angle relationships in circles. What are they talking about other? Well, we have already looked at 10.4 and looked at central angles and inscribed angles and the intercepted arcs that those central angles and inscribed angles created. And you will remember that with central angle, the measure of the central angle whose vertex is at the center, the measure of that angle is equal to the measure of its intercepted arc. Whereas the measure of the inscribed angle whose vertex is on the circle is one half of the or its intercepted arc or you could say one half of the central angle that creates the same intercepted arc. Okay, so that one half is really important. With central angle and intercepted arc, they're equal, but with inscribed angle and its intercepted arc, it is one half. The inscribed angle is one half of the in, its intercepted arc. So this is 120. Uh, multiply that by one half and you get 60. But here in 10.5, we're looking at other angle relationships. So how do I find the measures of angles inside or outside of a circle? Inside or outside of a circle? Let's first look at this, uh, this uh, very similar to an inscribed angle. Remember inscribed is when the vertex is on the circle. And you will remember that in an inscribed angle, here's your vertex on the circle and here are your two rays or two segments of your angle. And notice how they stay inside of the circle and then intersect here at your intercepted arc. Whereas in this particular situation, when you have a tangent, so one of your rays, instead of it being a chord inside of the circle, uh, the uh, segment is a, um, a tangent. This is a tangent that intersects the circle only at one point. And you remember it is perpendicular to the, ra the radius that comes from the center down to that point of tangency. But in this case, we're talking about the angle between this chord and the tangent. But just like with a intercepted, or I'm sorry, an inscribed angle, that is half of the intercepted arc, half of your intercepted arc, in the same general principle, even when one of the rays of your circle instead of it being a chord, it is a tangent line. Still, the measure of that angle between your chord and the tangent line is still one half of your intercepted arc. So you're still using that same principle of one half. Let me show you some examples here from our textbook. And so they want us to find the measure of this arc uh, sorry, this, this angle here. And what kind of an angle is it? Well, the vertex is on the circle, so it is an inscribed angle. But notice that one of the rays is a segment. This is a chord going circle to circle. That's a chord. The other part of your angle is a tangent line. And so therefore, uh, just as if, in fact here, if I was to go and take this, uh, inscribed angle and bring it out here, the, you know that this inscribed angle would be half of this intercepted arc. So half of 130 is 65. Well, the measure of this angle one is also 65. It's also one half of the same intercepted arc. So you think of it as taking this vertex and squeezing it down here until this little cord gets smaller and smaller and bink, the cord pops out as a tangent, this angle here, this inscribed angle, it's not really called an inscribed angle, I don't know what it's called, but it's, it has the vertex on the circle, but it includes a tangent line. It is also one half of 
this intercepted arc. And over here, they're telling us that the measure of this angle between a chord and a tangent line is 125. So the measure of its intercepted arc is going to be double the 125 and it will be uh, 250. Okay, so you are ready now for these three problems on our or your notes. So go ahead and pause the video and do these three problems, please. Now we're going to look at the last two scenarios. I know there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. We're really going to ignore this until we get to class. We'll talk about this in class. But right now, uh, let's just look at these two different scenarios. One is the scenario when the vertex is inside of the circle. When it's inside of the circle. And you will remember that a central angle has its vertex inside of the circle, but it's that uh, vertex is actually on the center, at the center. Whereas here, the vertex is somewhere inside of the circle. It might be on the center, but we don't know that. But we want to find what the measure of this angle that is inside of the circle is. And you, you will remember that the relationship between these two angles is that they are vertical, right? And so whatever the measure of angle one, this angle over here to the left is, has the same measure. These two angles are congruent because they are vertical angles. You will also remember that these two angles create a linear pair and are adjacent to each other. They're right beside each other. And they also are supplementary. They add up to the sum of these two angles is 180 degrees. So in order to find the measure of this angle, our formula here uh, applies to inside, when the vertex is inside the circle, our formula is 1 half, just like we've been accustomed to, when we have a inscribed angle, it's one half of the intercepted arc. And when we have an inscribed angle who has one side of the angle is a tangent. That's also one half of the intercepted arc. So same kind of concept here. It's one half. But notice that it is not just one of these intercepted arcs. It's also the sum of this right intercepted arc and also the left intercepted arc because these two angles here are like we said vertical and congruent so you can think of this this one here angle here is creating both of these intercepted arcs so you have to get the sum of these two intercepted arcs and then the half and then take half of that and that will be the measure of uh, this one angle so that's what it's like when the vertex is inside of the circle. The other scenario is when the vertex is outside of the circle. And this is the last part of this uh, section. This, this section you know, looks a whole lot of stuff here, but it's pretty simple. Uh, just three different scenarios, three basic uh, scenarios. One, when the vertex is on the circle and part of the angle is a tangent line. And then one, another one, when the vertex is in the circle, then we want to take the sum, uh, one half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. And then when the vertex is outside of the circle, we want, and here's the formula for this, uh, one half, and now it's not the sum of the intercepted uh, arcs, but it is the uh, the, the difference. I should have put difference there. So let's uh, put big parentheses here because that's also important for you to remember that uh, we want the I should put difference. I would like difference there. But uh, we want to subtract. Subtract these two intercepted arcs in order to find and then once we do the difference of these two intercepted arcs then we multiply it times two. We take half of that. And that will give us the measure of this angle that is outside of the circle. Okay, So those are our three basic 
uh, scenarios, whether the whether it's an inscribed angle whose ray is a tangent line, then it's half of the intercepted arc, or when it's a uh, the vertex is inside of the circle, then it's one half the sum of these two intercepted arcs. And then the third scenario is when the vertex is outside of the circle and it's one half the difference of these intercepted arcs. So we have to subtract uh, between those two. And when the vertex is outside of the circle, there's three basic scenarios where, here, but they're all the same. We handle, we use the same uh, equation for all three of these. In fact, that's what I probably should have done is, uh, oh, whatever, because um, it is a little bit different as far, uh, whatever, because it, just, just think of this one. Just use this one basic thing here and it applies to all three of them, okay? So whether the, uh, uh, the angle outside is created by, well, what's that called when it's a line, or in this case it's a ray that goes through the circle and touches the circle twice, what is that called? That is a secant. So whether you have a secant and a tangent, or two tangent lines, or two secant line or rays, uh, e either either way, uh, you still are using the same uh, basic formula. That the measure of this angle that's whose vertex is outside the circle is equal to one half the difference between the two intercepted arcs. So let me show you some examples here in your textbook. So what's going on here? We have, how's that, can you guys see that okay? We have a circle, got that. And then we're looking at an angle and where is the vertex of this angle? The vertex of this angle is inside of the circle and this could be the center, but we don't know. We don't know. In fact, we do know just by looking at it. Um, we can tell this part, but um, it uh, and sometimes we don't know whether or not we don't need need to know. Let's say it that way. <laughs> we don't need to know whether it's on the circle, on the center. Okay, but we do know that the vertex is in the circle, and therefore we're going to use that formula one half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. So we're looking at it this way. This is and make sure this is the angle that they want us to find and so these two angles here are congruent to each other because they're vertical angles and these two angles create these two intercepted arcs okay so everything's lined up there so the the uh, the measure of angle X is one half the sum of these two intercepted arcs so they tell us that this one here is 130 and the other one is 156, add those together and divide by 2 and you get 143. Pretty simple, huh? Let's look at this scenario. What do we have here? We have a circle and we have an angle. This vertex is outside of the circle and the, so the measure of this angle that's outside of the circle is one half and instead of being the sum it's one half the difference between these two intercepted arcs. So x equals uh, one half times the difference. So 178 minus 76. And when we do that, we get that the measure of this outside, this angle whose vertex is outside of the circle is 51 degrees. Okay, so those are your, your basic scenarios. And you are ready now to do number four. And so you're looking at this guy and you're saying, all right, they want us to find the value of the variable. Here is the variable. And so, and they give us this angle on the, the right side, but they're talking about the intercepted arcs on the top and bottom. Huh, so this is a little bit different. Um, but I do know, because remember, uh, it's this angle here that is one half the sum of these intercepted arcs because this vertex is inside of the circle. So I need to first figure out what the measure of this angle is. Well, we do know 
that these two angles are adjacent and also create a linear pair. Let me make this bigger. And also are therefore uh, supplementary uh, with each other. So the sum of these two angles is 180. So let's take 180 and subtract 102 from it and I get 78. So this angle on the inside here is 78 degrees and yes this angle over here is also 78 degrees because these two guys are vertical. So 78 degree angle is the one that creates these two uh, intercepted arcs. So let's set up our equation and now we're going to say 78 that's the measure of the angle on the inside is equal to one half and now remember when the vertex is on the inside when the vertex is on the inside of the circle it's one half the sum of these intercepted arcs. So this uh, angle whose vertex is on the inside of the triangle and the 78 is equal to one half the sum of these intercepted arcs. So let's say uh, y plus 95. Okay, so that is your equation that you want to be able to solve for. And I think you know how to do this, right? You know how to clear this denominator by multiplying both sides by 2. And then once you do that, then you can subtract 95 from both sides in order to find the value of y. You can do that. Let's, let's go ahead and pause the video and finish that one up. For this one, same general concept uh, here, except this vertex is outside of the circle. So therefore, we're going to use this equation, that the measure of the angle outside of a triangle is one half and the difference between those two uh, intercepted arcs. So the measure of this angle outside of the triangle, which is 30, is equal to 1 half. And because our vertex is outside, therefore it's 1 half the difference. And let's take the bigger one, of course, first. So that's A. And then minus the other one is 44 degrees. So there's your equation. And you want to solve this for A in the same way that you did this other one by multiplying both sides by 2 in order to clear your denominator and then add 44 to both sides. And then this last one, here you are looking for what? You want to find the measure of this intercepted arc on the outside over here. Wow, look at that. And so in order to do that, Let's try to find the measure of this uh, interior, not interior, but this other intercepted arc here, right? If we can find the measure of this intercepted arc, then we subtract that from 360, or, or yeah, subtract that from 360, and we get the remaining uh, intercepted arc, okay? And they are telling us that uh, this uh, radius here is perpendicular to this ray. Hmm, that looks like a T, doesn't it? Hey, isn't there some word that we know that starts with T? Yeah, it's tangent. So this line here is tangential. This is a tangent to the circle. And also over here, this guy is a tangent to the circle. And you remember in 10 point, I think it was 10.1, that we said that if you have two uh, lines that are tangent to the circle and they intersect then from that point of intersection to the po the uh, tangent points of tangency there's points of tangencies uh, these will be congruent uh, with each other so I do know that these two segments here are congruent with each other and I do also know that this is a right triangle okay so I want to find this right triangle and